Hello there and welcome to the third part of the basics of room acoustic simulation using Python. Last time we saw how to create non-convex rooms and how to define some materials and use some materials. And this time we are going to import STL files for its use in Pyroom Acoustics. So first we are in Google Colab. Let's install Pyroom Acoustics. If you're not familiar with Google Colab or Jupyter Notebooks, I'll leave a link to a series of tutorials that explains a bit how to use Jupyter Notebooks and Google Colab Notebooks. So we're installing Pyroom Acoustics using pip. So it's done installing Pyroom Acoustics and the next thing that I'm going to install is NumPy STL. So NumPy STL is a simple library to make working with STL files and 3D objects in general fast and easy. All operations heavily rely on NumPy so this makes a fast STL library for Python. And I also will install it using pip. I will not talk about the IPy MPL now, just so I will show you the reason why I will install it later. This tutorial is based on the Pyroom Acoustics example that you find on the Pyroom Acoustics GitHub, and it uses an STL file that is called indriamusic.stl and you find it here in the GitHub. So what I'm doing now is using wget to download this STL file. So at the moment we don't have any other files here, but now I downloaded this indiamusic.stl and we see it's here in our environment and we are ready to use it. I will also skip this for now, so I will show you why I will use IPyMPL and why I will configure Google Colab to use it later. This is also I will talk later. So now we start importing our Python packages. We are going to use matplotlib to plot, numpy, we will to uh, Pyroom Acoustics, we need to import the mesh from STL. And here we are just defining our path to the STL file that is our uh, indriamuses.stl. So let's import. The next step is to load this file and we load it using mesh.mesh .mesh from file. This is the path that we defined here, and then we will have this mesh. So we have many things we can do with this mesh now. We have areas, centroids, we have points, vectors, so basically we have, we could, for example, take normals and we could take a look of the normals of the mesh and many things it's possible to do now that we have our file as a mesh. So what we're doing next, we're getting from the vector shape, we have the number of triangles, number of vectors and number of points, and we are using a size reduction factor of 500 to get a realistic room size and not 3 kilometers of room size. So the way this file was built in the STL, it has this size which is not suitable for our rooms, so this is why we are reducing by a factor of 500 here. Next, we are defining some material. We are just giving some, uh, some energy absorption coefficient 0 
and 0.1 for scattering coefficients. We are calling this pyroma acoustics material. There are many ways how we can define material, and I covered some of these methods before in our previous tutorial. And in fact, you can define one material per tri triangle of the mesh. In this case, we're just for simplicity, we are just passing this one material for all the triangles, but you could have mm, complex geometries and assign different materials for each triangle. Now that we have our number of triangles in our material, we were going to create walls from these triangles. So we're having an empty list for the walls. Then we will iterate over the number of triangles we'll have and we'll append a material and the coordinates of our wall using this reduction factor that I mentioned before. So we see that we need to transpose the vectors just so it, it is aligned with how Pyroom Acoustics expects our walls coordinates to be used. So now we have our walls and we can define a room using our walls. So we are defining a room. We've seen how to do it before. We are passing our walls. We are adding a source at this position and we are adding two microphones using the microphone add microphone array. And we have one microphone at this position and another at this position. And we see that they are basically just 0 0.4 in the y axis. After we define our room, oh, one thing to notice is they're using this np.c and np.c translates slice objects to concatenation along, along the second axis. So basically it's um, doing this here. We have this array one, two, three, four, five, six, and when we use this C, then now we have an array of one, four, one, four, two, five, and three, six. And this is all formatting some values in order to use Pyroom Acoustics and how the add microphone array expects us to pass the arrays. So let's take a look at the add microphone array method, it adds a microphone array or several microphones in the room. So we have some parameters, the array that can be provided as an array of size, dimension of the room and number of microphones, or we can provide a microphone array, which is another class that we can use. It's a microphone array class and we could pass it here as well. So we've seen add source before, add microphone array. Now we can compute the room impulse response. We are calling the image source model ray tracing, we're computing the RIR, and then we're plotting the RIR. And we've seen this before in previous tutorials. There is nothing new here. Oh, I need to run the cell. And we have here our room impulse response from microphone zero and source zero, and for microphone one and source zero. Finally, we can plot our room And we see here that we have our STL, the shape coming from the STL file. We have our image sources. We have our microphone array. And now this is why I'm going back to the IPy MPL because in Google Colab, when we use matplotlib, we don't have any interactivity. We cannot do anything with these plots. They are fixed. They display just like some images here. And sometimes it's not very interesting to work with these non-interactive 
plots. So this is why there is the IPy MPL. So IPy MPL enables using the interactive features of Matplotlib in Jupyter Notebooks, Jupyter Lab, Google Colab, and VS Code Notebooks. And we can install it with pip. So this is what I am going to do. But first I need to disconnect and really delete my Actually, I don't need to do. I can just go here and install IPy MPL. Now I will configure Google Colab to use this IPy MPL, and we can use this from Google Colab import output, and we will enable custom widget manager. Now I will activate the IPy MPL matplotlib backend and hopefully I will be able to plot again without restarting the notebook. Okay now I have some interactivity. It's a bit slow but it's better than without any interactivity. And we can zoom in here, we can rotate here our 3D plot, we can also zoom and we have a certain level of interactivity using matplotlib and it's easier to navigate. So that's it for this tutorial. We've seen how to load an STL file using this NumPy STL and then we simply define our walls using these triangles that are in the mesh we need to make sure how this STL file was defined and if we need to do any dimension reduction we could define one material for each different triangle. The tricky part here is to know so if you have a very complex geometry it's quite tricky to know the order which these triangles are, so which triangle is what, so you could define a certain material for a specific triangle. So these are some of the limitations of pyroom acoustics. For sure it's possible to overcome it if you do some tricks, but it's not straightforward. I believe that the add microphone array is something new that we can add two microphones or more microphones at the same time creating a, an array of microphones but we could also add microphone in this position and then add another microphone in another position and we will have the same effect. And we've seen the IPy matplotlib that it's very handy not just for Pyroom Acoustics but if you are using matplotlib inside a Google Colab and you want a certain level of interactivity then you can use the IPy MPL. That's it for now and I see you next time.